So the S22 Ultra is coming up on its one year mark and should you be considering the S22 Ultra right now, especially with maybe the S23 Ultra coming right around the corner or a bunch of other phones coming out in this year and also all the other phones that came out in 2022, like late 2022, like the iPhone, the Pixel, even the Z Fold series, like should you still be considering the S22 Ultra in 2023? Or if you have an S22 Ultra right now, should you consider trading it in or swapping devices right now? Let's talk about it. So first, the design. I think it's clean. I think it's simple. If you want a premium looking device, you're going to get it with the S22 Ultra. Now, of course, this is subjective, so you may not like it. But personally, I like it, especially because I'm always using a case. But without a case, it looks elegant. It looks clean. It's matte. It's green. It's got... um glossy sides just like most other phones as well but still i think it's a relatively clean looking device and also it does have the lenses that don't have like an actual camera bump so some phones or most phones i should say have like a bigger camera bump this is just the lenses coming out whether you like it or not i think it looks nice it's also water resistant and dust resistant so as far as durability it's been holding up pretty well again i do use a case like i said so i don't really have many dings or scratches here and there on the display itself i don't use a screw protector so i do have a couple micro scratches but still that corning gorilla glass i think victus plus i think is what it has it is holding up pretty well um so not really many big scratches or gashes unlike on my oneplus 10 pro i forget if that has um victus plus as well but this one doesn't have as many scratches. It is a curved display, so uh, it's up to you to decide if you like that. I mean, if you have one already, if, is it annoying? Do, do, you, do you feel bothered by it? But let me know in the comments, I guess. But either way, I'm okay with it because, again, I use a case, so I don't really have accidental touches or anything like that. And I, I like the way it feels when you're, you know, pressing back or whatever and feeling the curvedness of the display. I think it looks nice or feels nice, I should say. It doesn't always look nice though because sometimes it does cause some glariness if like a light's hitting it at a certain angle sometimes you'll notice that there's a little bit of glare on the edges but besides that the display itself i think it's gorgeous in my opinion it's like a 6.7 inch uh, 120 hertz i think it's 6.7 um, hopefully it is but either way it's a big display it's 1440p 120 hertz amoled oled whatever it's fantastic it's bright it's colorful and it's super smooth as well when you're scrolling around kind of smooth. I would say it's smooth, but not super smooth. I might have over, uh, done an overstatement there. But either way, this is great for watching a ton of content. Not only is it a big device, but it's a great display as well, like I said. So for watching content, no issue on the S22 Ultra. And the speakers themselves do a decent job. So when you're watching content, it doesn't sound you know terrible. You know, you get a decent experience for watching your content here. And finishing off the rest of the body around the S22 Ultra, you do have the S Pen at the bottom, it does have, again, like a note light design. So this is bringing the best of both worlds from the Note series and the S series. And it's got that S Pen. I'll be honest, in the whole year that I've had it, I probably brought the S Pen out to use it for just clicking the button. I don't really think I used it much for gestures, for writing notes, for navigating the system. Not necessarily. Every now and then, maybe. The most usage I think I'll ever get with it is getting screenshots, which is actually pretty useful. So if you ever need to take a precise screenshot of something on your display, just take your S Pen out, use one of the uh, quick command tools, and then you just pull an S Pen or pull an S Pen. Pull a screenshot of whatever you want. Now you do have to be, um, make sure it's a little big um, section, not something tiny, but still, you can be pretty precise about what you want to take a screenshot of. And then you can take a note on that screenshot if you wanted to, which is, again, pretty useful if you ask me, but I don't use it a ton, but it's there if you're going to use it. And plus, you can also use it as a shutter, so you can put your camera up or your phone up somewhere and then take your S Pen out and then get everyone lined up. And then once everyone's lined up, you don't have to go up, run to it, run back. Nope. Just use your S Pen, click it, and everyone's in the shot without having to worry about anything. So that's pretty cool. And in fact, let's talk about cameras real quick. Um, cameras are great. I honestly think they're very good for what you're getting, uh, especially for what you're getting, honestly. Um, I would only th say the experience can be a little bit... Not super premium feeling sometimes just because you do feel a little bit of lag in the shutter whenever you click that shutter button. Sometimes you feel like it's taking just... A millisecond too long or if you like spam it you, you definitely feel it compared to other devices but besides that the camera quality i think looks really good so whatever it is it's gonna come out a bit vibrant maybe for some people but i think most people might really like it because you can take these photos or whatever you're taking a shot of and just post them right away you don't have to edit them now samsung just adds a good amount of color a good amount of vibrancy makes the high dynamic range look good 
I don't even know what I'm talking about, honestly. It just looks really good in my opinion. And plus, those night shots also look really good. And the moon shots, if you want to take pictures of the moon, look awesome. Video, I think, also gets the job done as well. It can do 4K, 60, 30, and even 8K, but I'm not going to do 8K anytime soon. But still, you have the ability to do it. And my favorite thing is definitely going to be the zoom capabilities. Video may not be as crazy because it caps out at 20x, but it still looks pretty good. But the fact that you can do 100x, again, this helps with the whole moon photo taking experience. But even without the moon taking experience, you can take super zoomed photos of whatever you want. You could be a creep if you want to. I don't care what you do with it, but I just think it's really cool. So you have an overall very versatile camera when it comes to the S22 Ultra. The front's also pretty good in my opinion. I don't really take selfies, but you know, they're there if you want to take selfies and it's overall a really good front facing camera. Same thing with video, front facing video also again, for the most part, I have no issues with it. I think it looks similar to the back where it adds a little bit of color, a little bit of a uh, vibrancy to it, but still overall good. And plus these cameras are optimized for most social media apps, I believe. So I know for me, for Snapchat, they're optimized. So I'm always happy using this uh, phone for uh, social media, such as Snapchat. Now getting into the performance, this phone will handle pretty much everything you throw at it with no problem. But every now and then I will say that I do encounter some lag or some choppiness in the animations and stuff like that. And the phone definitely can get warm over time, especially if you're doing something more demanding, like using the camera for a long time or playing games. Granted, I, do, I don't play many games often, but I'll play games like Rocket League uh, sometimes, usually the, uh, the game I like to play is uh, Apex Legends to try out how powerful the device is not really committed to that game so when you see me play apex legends that's just me playing it for the to get b-roll honestly and just to test it out um but it's definitely capable of doing it no problem but again sometimes it can get pretty warm and again like i said over expended extended periods of time you may encounter sometimes where it may lag out when you're exiting the game or if you're just browsing around for a long time you might encounter a little bit of an animation chop here and there but Overall, I still think it gets the job done. And some things may also be down to the software because right now it has Android 13 with the latest One UI. And I think One UI, the new features, haven't had really the chance to explore everything because you know I'm busy, so I don't really have the chance to really customize how I want to. But I still think it provides you with a ton of cool features, whether it be customizing or just productivity stuff. Uh, overall, Great experience in my opinion because there's a ton of features I could talk about that I love. So for one, I love the multitasking abilities that the S22 Ultra has or just Samsung has in general. I like the ability that you can force every app into multitasking mode, which basically means you can split the screen in two ways and you'll have one uh, app at the top, one at the bottom. Don't do it often, but usually I'll find myself putting YouTube at the top and then browsing another app at the bottom just because it makes it really nice to have a video, a video playing at the top and then you're doing something else at the bottom. Um, and also like the ability to drop apps, mainly use that for the calculator. So if I'm doing some kind of financial investment, such as like buying a Bulbasaur uh, Funko Pop or some other Pokemon Funko Pop, I want to see how much I'm spending so I can do the mathematical equations and arithmetic uh, stuff, you know. Um, but either way, I, I think it provides you with a lot of cool uh, multitasking abilities on here and also just a freedom of customization, as I mentioned before. A ton of stuff you can do, whether it's just directly on the stock settings or you can download Good Luck, which I think may not be available in every single region and country, but it's available here in the US and I enjoy using it because you have the ability to do some for me some small things there's a ton of other stuff you can do but for me it's just taking away those labels yes i just like just having the icon i think it looks a lot cleaner and also the um app drawer you have the ability to customize that how you want as well so you can make folders you can then also customize each page. You can also, I think, go into good luck and change how it works. So if you want to go vertical or horizontal, like how you swipe, however you want to do it, you can do it. So there's a ton of different features you have available, whether it was stuff that was already on previous versions of One UI or Android or new features. I really didn't notice a ton of new big features is mostly just the ability to customize your lock screen now. And they added, I think, one or two things here and there, mostly trying to copy Apple, I think. But still, um, they're always updating this, which is good. And their update you know, uh, patterns or whatever has definitely gotten better. I've definitely seen that I've gotten updates 
more consistently versus having to wait a couple of months. Now it's like one month every other month or something like that versus, like I said, a couple of months. So, and you'll still definitely get a long life of support when it comes to those software support. So you'll definitely be getting another like maybe three years, I think. I think it, they promised four major OS updates and then five years security updates. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's what it was. So now you're down to three years of OS updates and then four years of uh, security updates. So that's still plenty of life left in the S22 Ultra, whether you're be getting it now or you have it now. Still a lot of support when it comes to the S22 Ultra software. Now, when it comes to the battery, this is where I think I saw, I don't know if it was an improvement or it's gotten worse because I'm trying to use my phone a little bit more heavily now because back then when I was testing out phones, I would still use my everyday stuff, whether it be my computer, my tablets and stuff like that. I would try to just, you know, do my life as I would normally, but I figured not everyone does that. Not everyone watches, has the ability to watch content on a tablet, on a TV or on a monitor or stuff like that. So I'm like, all right, let me just use this phone like if it was my only device to consume content on and stuff like that. So this was with me for watching videos, which I usually do, but most of the time I would watch, like I said, on a tablet. So now everything I would I do in my day to day was done on the S22 Ultra. So usually that meant that I was only getting like two to three hours of screen on time in a day because, you know, not really using it much. Um, and I was able to get through a whole day with no problem and sometimes even to the next day. But since then, since I've been like using this as my only device, I've gotten one, a lot more screen on time, but also the battery has not lasted the whole day. Sometimes it can, but sometimes I'm charging maybe twice in a day. So usually, like I said, two to three hours of screen on time when I'm barely using it. And at that point you should be fine with battery life, but if you're using it intensely or using it a lot throughout your day, so I'm now getting like anywhere from four to maybe sometimes seven hours of screen on time and I'll use the phone from the morning to the afternoon. So in the morning, I'll have to charge up to make sure it's fully charged to 100%. So by like six or seven o'clock, I unplug. Then I don't have to charge again till about around the same time in the afternoon. So around six or 7 p.m. So take that as you will, whether you consider that great or bad battery life. I think it's you know good and pretty decent overall. Like for example, right now it's 641. So let me see what, oh, come on. I forgot to talk about biometrics, which I will get to in a second. I just failed my biometrics right now. So um, let me put in my password and let me give you how much uh, screen on time I have right now. Okay, so right now this is actually probably one of my lower days, uh, surprisingly. So I have a total of four hours and 24 minutes of screen on time and a total usage of the phone for 12 hours and 17 minutes. So I unplugged around 7 p.m. or 7 p.m., 7 a.m. this morning and I'm still at 20%. So Take that as you will if you think that's good or bad battery life. Like I said, for me, I think it gets the job done because the charging speeds are good enough. I think they're definitely good enough compared to the competition. I know I struggled a little bit to say if it was good or not, but I think it's definitely good enough because it takes just about over an hour, like maybe an hour and like eight or 10 minutes. So it's plenty good enough. So if you have to charge for maybe like a half hour, you'll definitely get to like 60 or 70%. And that's more than enough to get you to the rest of the afternoon and into the night. Now, if you're going out, I would maybe try to charge it up to 100% to make sure. But still, um, I think for me, it's good battery life. It also has wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. Don't really use reverse wireless charging. And I don't really use wireless charging anymore as much as because I got rid of my wireless chargers. But either way, uh, that's battery life for you. And those biometrics is because I forgot to talk about them earlier. The finger sensor under the display, I think it's plenty fast enough and gets the job done. I really don't have much of an issue with it. Although you just saw that I did have an issue just now because uh, it wasn't detecting my finger. Now that was because I was accidentally turning it on when I'm holding it in my hand like this. Sometimes I'm actually accidentally triggering it. So I only had one chance and that one chance I happened to miss. So then it made me wait, but still, I think it gets the job done. Definitely might, it definitely could be better, but it gets the job done for me. And also facial recognition, Again, it's not perfect, but it still gets the job done. Sometimes it doesn't recognize me, so I have to use my fingerprint sensor. And sometimes, like I said, the fingerprint sensor doesn't recognize me, then facial recognition would recognize me. So they sometimes balance themselves out, but you know, it's not that bad. I think it does the, does the job, it gets the job done. So overall, should you go out and get the S22 Ultra right now, if you don't have it, I would tell you now, wait and see what the S23 Ultra has to bring and if it, improves on it a lot more and you can get a really good deal around the same price as the S22 Ultra, 
I would say snatch the S23 Ultra. Otherwise, maybe consider a Pixel 7 Pro. I don't know. But as far as if you have one right now, you're good, man. You're, you're, you're fine. You don't need to get it. Even with the S23 Ultra not even being out yet right now, I can tell you, you're probably going to be fine for this year and probably even more into next year. So you're fine if you already have the S22 Ultra. Now, if you're a phone buff and want to have the latest and greatest and there's no stopping you, there's no point in watching this video. Your phone is amazing, but you want the better one. So get the S22 Ultra when that comes out. But for me, um, I think I might switch out of it. I, as much as I love the features that it has with it, I think I'm going to try out the Z Fold 4 again as my daily driver. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's that's been it. I hope this video helped. I hope it was entertaining, informing, and you enjoyed. So glad to be back. I know I've been out for a little bit. Um, yeah, that's that's been it. Hope you guys enjoyed.